Hello and welcome to the second getting started video on how to set up Rucksack. So in this video we're going to set up a character collection, we're going to equip some items, and we're going to set up loot boxes, and if there's time for it we'll also do the vendors. So let's get started with the um, character collection. So on our player we are going to create a new unit equipable character, which defines an equipable character, and this character requires a specific collection um, which is used for the equipable character. So we need to create a UNET's uh, equipable uh, equipment collection creator. So we'll create a collection called Equipment 1. I'm just going to copy the name. It is a player collection and I'm going to set this to read write so the player can actually um, change things in the collection. Um, and then here in the equipable character it's going to use Equipment 1, the name of the equipment that, uh, the collection that we just created. Okay, um, we need to define slots and those are basically where certain items can get equipped. But there is a little utility here that we can use to copy things from the UI. So we can design our UI, uh, specify where certain items can get equipped, and then using this utility, the, the editor part at the bottom, we can just copy it all over so the equipment collection knows where certain items can get equipped. So let's create the UI. I'm going to create a new character, equipment, and this is going to get the um, equipment collection UI. And I'm just going to give it a name. Turn those off. Uh, add an input handler. To press C. And then we can set up our equipment collection. What we essentially what we want to do now is to create a few slots inside of this window. So I'll, I'll just create a background image so we can see the window a little bit. There we go. And now we want to create a few slots. So for example, one for the head, one for the body, and one for the for the boots that the player can equip to. We can use the previously defined slots. However, this one is an item collection slot UI, and we actually want to create an equipment item collection slot UI. So I'm just going to duplicate this one. And I'll call this one an equipment slot. And then if we go to the, the top right corner here, we can say debug, and then we can change the item collection slot UI to a equipment collection slot UI. There we go. So on our equipment collection slot UI, we have the input handlers that, that are still from our, from our old collection slot. But we now have an equipment collection slot UI, and these are item collection slot input handlers. So these input handlers are designed for item collections, and this is an equipment collection. So we're actually going to remove these input handlers and add the correct ones for an equipment collection. So let's go to search for equipment collection slot input handler and the track handler. We don't actually need the sell to vendor because when we right click or click on the um, object that is already equipped on our character. We don't actually want to sell it, we want to unequip it. So that's, we can remove that input handler because we never want that to happen. So we've got the drag handler, we can enable this as we did in the other one, and that all looks okay. And I'm just going to drag these into the character equipment window. And let's duplicate it a few times. So we have one for the head, we have one for the body and one for the feet. So uh, the next thing we have to do is add a um, component that defines which items can get equipped in which slots. And that is a Unity equipment types. So this, this essentially defines um, what can get equipped in this specific slot. I actually added it on the prefab. So on the head, we want to specify we can only equip uh, item types of type head. In the body only body, in the feet only feet. Uh, you can add multiple ones, so you might say on the head you can equip uh, wigs, uh, helmets, sunglasses, etc. So you can make multiple equipment types and you can specify those here. If we go to Rockstack main editor and we go to the equipment editor, you can see the previously, uh, in the previous video, we created a head equipment type. So let's actually create another one and I'm just going to call this one body. And another one that will create all feet. So we have these three right now. And we can specify those inside of our um, inside of our um, equipment uh, equipment types here. 
Oh, let's actually give these a decent name because they're kind of hard to find. Uh, So we've set these up and the last point we have to define is the mount point name. And the mount point name defines which mountable object, mountable component is used to equip the item. And you can make different mount points that have different behaviors. So you might want to equip uh, a cape to your character, which requires the skin mesh or skin cloth component to be initialized. And you can do that through mount points. So in this case, um, Let's give it the exact same name as the equipment type. And feet. And now we're going to define those on our player. So I'm just going to grab my player prefab and just drag it into the scene. And I'm going to create new empty object called the head. And if we search for mount points, you can see we have a cloth, skinned, and static mesh mount point. So the static one is just for, for example, a sword or a shield, something that doesn't move. The skinned one is for clothing, um, and the cloth mesh point is for dynamically simulated clo cloths. So let's let's start with the simple static mesh mount point, and actually let's create, do it like this, and we've got one for the head, we've got one for the body, and we've got one for the feet. Now these have to match up with the ones that we set here. So mount point name feet is this mount point. And you can you can of course use different mount points. So if you want to use a static one here or you want to use a cloth one here, etc., you, you can of course do that. So if we now scroll down, you can see that on our UNET equipable character, it's found these three mount points. So double check, make sure that they are here uh, and registered, because otherwise the equipment won't work. So now our UNET equipment collection creator actually needs to have the equipment collection data, so the, the information about where items can get equipped. And the easiest way to do that is to grab our character equipment collection UI and to just drag it into our editor field here. Um, but there's a few things we haven't done yet. So on our character equipment, we haven't set our slot yet. So actually let's assign that one, set the UI container and the name, which was equipment one. Just gonna double check equipment one. Um, so that, that one is actually set up now and it's it's ready to be used. So on our player, we can copy the information from that collection UI into our into our equipment. So this this is basically the, the data it copied. You don't really have to, to look or worry about this. It automatically copies it. But every time you change or add, uh, add slots to your character equipment collection, make sure to to update your character equipment collection again because it needs to be the same as the information set in your UI. Okay, so our player is set up, everything looks okay. So let's just hit apply. So we apply all to our prefab. I'm just gonna remove it from the scene again. So let's create some equipable characters and see if it all works. So I'm just gonna go to the main editor and I'm gonna create a new item, equipable item definition. Uh, let's call it a sword. I can well, model the equipment type. Um, we actually created a body, head, and feet. Uh, let's just equip it to the body for now. And then we have to define our mount point, which we'll call body, the equipment model. In case you leave the equipment model blank, it will use the world model. So you can specify the world model, which is basically the model you drop into the world. Um, or, or that you would see when you pick it up. And you can set a separate equipment model. So in case you want to have those uh, differentiate, but you, you can you can leave a blanket uses the default one. You can also specify one, so it's up to you. And I'm just gonna give it a weight of five. Okay, so we've defined our item and let's go into the sphere that we created in the first video. And I'm just going to swap out the item definition for the one we created, the equipable item definition. So we'll actually pick up the sword. Let's give it a try. I'm just gonna start as a host. Okay, so let's click the sphere. Actually, the window is in front of it, so I'm just gonna move it a little bit. 
There we go. Click it, so we pick it up into our inventory collection. I can right click it and it equips it to the body as we originally intended because we've set the equipment type to body. So the item got equipped uh, as expected and it instantiated the uh, sword into the world. So our player is here. Um, our player is actually not visible because it doesn't have any any visual components or a player is, is just an, an, an empty object. But the sword actually got instantiated into the correct mount point, so it is created here, as you can see. And that is all handled through this specific static mesh mount point. Alright, let's set up a loot box next. Um, loot boxes are essentially the same as the, the sphere that we created here. Uh, the only thing that's different is that we want to have a loot window. That's going to show all the items that are inside of that loot box. Let's start by creating a very simple box. Just going to stretch it out a little bit. So what we want to do now is create a collection creator. Um, the same as we did before. Oh, sorry, a units item collection creator. And we'll give this a uh, collection name of loots, a slot count of five. It is not a player collection and you actually cannot check it. When you do, you'll get an error. Um, the permission the player gets is none. When this loot box is created or the collection itself is created, the player has no permissions yet. So when the player comes in range and clicks on the box, he will gain permission to actually loot the items that are inside of it. So this is basically cheat prevention. Um, we also want to add a generator, so we can actually generate some items in this collection from the very start. So let's add the let's add the sort that we previously had, and we want to add one. So this will fill the collection with a single item with with the sword um, at the start of our game. Okay, so now we want to make sure that we can actually use the loot box. So I'm just going to add a unit trigger. We need a unit tr uh, trigger input handler and. We have the mouse click, we don't want to have a key code, and let's all set it correctly. And next up, the same way as we did with our sphere, we want to add a, um, a range handler. So we're just going to create a, create empty, call this range handler, like that, which specifies the range in which we can use this loot, bo loot box. And lastly, we want to give the player permission um, to, the, to the collection of the loot box when he or she clicks it. And that is done through an enabler. So we have uh, an item collection enabler, which basically means whenever this trigger is used, I want to give a certain collection permissions. So the name is loot. So when the player uses this trigger, the collection name with loot, that player will get read and write permission. When the trigger is unused, the permission will be reset to none. And you can use this on any trigger you'd like. So you could for example, allow the player to gain read and write permissions when they open a certain door or any trigger, anything at all in your game. So that is all set up and it looks good to get started. So let's give it a try. So I'm just going to click the box and actually we, we see nothing happening at all. So if we go to tools, rucksack, and we open the UNET collection debugger, we get this window here which basically allows us to see which permissions which player has based on the collections in the game. So here we have, for example, our collection name loot, and it has the GUID and the permission set, the type, etc., um, and the owner ID of that specific collection. So in this case, the loot box itself, so the, the object in the world, has read and write permissions, but the player here, you can see, which is our player, has also read and write permissions. If I click it again, the permissions will be revoked. As you can see, the player got removed from the identities with access list. So that player no longer has permission to use the collection uh, that is associated with this loot box. If we click it again, we should get permission again. So what we want to do now is actually build a UI so we can actually see what's inside of that collection. We already have the permission, but we don't have anything to visualize it yet. And we're going to do that by creating a loot UI. Let's start as before by creating an image with a bit of a background. So 
So this is also an item collection UI. It is just a collection, the same as all the other elements. It is storing items uh, as, you, as your inventory does. So it's the same component as before. So let's call this one loot. We don't want to hide it. And we can add an input handler if we'd like for say when we press L. It's gonna hide the window. Then we want to assign a prefab, which is just our default slot, because we don't display or handle input differently than we would in in our inventory. We could, if we'd like, so you can assign a different collection slot, but you can use the default one. So I'm just going to assign the transform, and then here we'll specify the name of the collection, which is loot. And let's add a grid layout group, so we can actually display the items properly in a grid. Okay, let's give it a try. So we're going to click it, as you can see, it repaints it up here. We can actually drag it outside of our loot box into our inventory right now. We can right click it to equip it, everything works as expected. That's if this video will handle vendors in the next video because it's it would otherwise get a bit long. So we'll handle that in the next video. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.